This isn't the first time Justin Trudeau has had to deal with dissent from within. Jody Wilson-Raybould was appointed Trudeau's Minister of Justice and Attorney General in 2015, a key appointment in Cabinet. But it was one that some also criticized as a ploy by Trudeau to portray an image of reconciliation, a criticism that had more traction after she was ousted from Cabinet. Now Jody Wilson-Raybould has penned a new book, Reconciling History, due out next month. And she joins me first for our exclusive chat about that. Welcome to the show, Jody. Great to see you. Really nice to be back. Thanks for having me. Tell me about what moved you to, to write this book about reconciliation. I know it's been a huge theme of, of your career, but uh, this is a, a new and different approach. Yeah, well, this um, the new book, Reconciling History, A Story of Canada, builds on my previous book, which speaks about true reconciliation and answering the question that so many people across the country ask me, which is, what can I do to help advance reconciliation? And one of the things from that book, which this book builds on, is telling um, through an oral history the story of Canada from many different perspectives. And Reconciling History is based around a totem pole that was raised in my grandmother's village totem poles which speak to our history lineage um, times beyond clan and creation but also the totem pole was raised at a time of one of the darkest chapters in our history as canadians um, and re is reflective of the reality of the colonial legacy so i seek to ask people um, to look at our history in, in different ways and in different perspectives yeah, I, reading this book, you, I was uh, fortunate enough to get the advanced copy. It's so beautifully told, and it's it's so different because, as you say, you're, you're literally telling a story through each level of the totem pole and, and your description of it and, and what each symbol means and how it was interpreted is very different than, I think, uh, often the academic or policy or just straight-up very uh, cut-cold history that we hear on these things. It, it was this uh, emotional tale where I felt like, you know, I was I was really taken to a different place in how I even understood those events. What drew you to the totem pole as as that center, as a way to share your history with people who've never experienced that? Yeah, I mean, history is complicated, and history has been told through many different perspectives and experiences. And I think that it's important for all of us to look at history in different ways through the lens lenses of different people. Um, for me, the totem pole um, was raised back in 1936 um, after the death of King George V. And it represents the four tribes of the Muskama of which I am from. And the Muskama working together to um, uh, in their struggle for justice and to outrun the legacy of colonialism. So um, the four tribes are represented on the pole and I tell the story or through the words of other people at yeah, the top of the pole is a thunderbird that speaks to resurgence and resilience and light and building um, a common history and a shared story of of this country indigenous and non-indigenous peoples alike and speaking of that that thunderbird and the present and where we are how would you describe where Canada's at in terms of reconciliation? I think we are making some constructive change in terms of reconciliation. Um, more and more people are wanting to learn of our history, to understand that there are certainly different worldviews that exist and to try and build more positive relationships between Indigenous and non-Indigenous peoples. I have the fortune of traveling quite extensively across the country and more and more Canadians than ever before are having these discussions. But one thing is a concern to me is the reality that so much is deemed reconciliation in this country, particularly by political leaders, um, uh, you know, looking at performative reconciliation or symbolic reconciliation action other than the actual real work that needs to be done on the ground to effect true reconciliation. We need to be 
able to sift through the performative nature of reconciliation and and um, find as our litmus test how we are actually creating change on the ground in Indigenous communities. But I think we need to take heart that we um, are moving on reconciliation. There has been some positive change. There's a lot more that needs to be done, but I take heart and, and um, optimism from how many Canadians um, in their own lives are wanting to get involved and play their part in terms of building that common memory and our shared story. You brought up political leaders there, and of course, I, I have to ask you, as one of the first very public dissenters from Justin Trudeau's original cabinet, what your thoughts are on the leadership challenges he's facing and whether he should stay or go? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I kind of look at well, provincial politics and federal politics, and sometimes I feel like it's the equivalent of, of scrolling through Twitter. It's become very toxic. I mean, I I think that um, true leaders, real leaders should know when to step aside gracefully. Um, I mean, it's no secret. I think that um, the prime minister should step down, although I think the, the timing of that um, to put in place uh, another leader is shrinking. Um, yeah, I, I feel um, somewhat sorry for some of the members of parliament who are rightfully expressing their concerns and wanting to be heard and um sounds like they're not really getting much of a reception to those concerns um and you know i'm sure that everyone has the best interests of the party and wants to ensure um to put their best foot forward in the election but it seems like that uh, um, their concerns are not uh, are falling on deaf ears why do you think those concerns fall on deaf ears? Why do you think it is that the, the Prime Minister and his senior staff around him aren't open to, to listening to this or, or to considering him departing? I mean, he says he's he's looked into it, but he still believes he is the best person to run against Pierre Polyev. You know, I feel that in my experience that the, um, this prime minister believes that what is best for the country is if he stays in the position that he is in. I'm not sure if it's in his nature to be self-reflective in the sense of stepping aside, um, but um, for the, the good of the party, I would, and they're not going to take advice from me, but highly recommend to listen to the individuals who are elected by their constituents and that are bringing forward legitimate concerns um, about his leadership or how they want to, how the Liberal Party wants to go into the next election. Um, there's a vast array of experience um, from individuals in a caucus that represent um, individuals back home in their constituencies. And um, I would recommend that uh, he and they listen to those, those individuals. What advice would you have for those dissenting caucus members who now have to make a decision about whether they voice their concerns and they back off, whether they try to recruit more supporters to their cause, or, or if they do something more public like you did? I believe that principle should always trump um, partisanship and, and party politics. So um, do what your constituents ask you to do and represent them in the best way that you can. And for me, um, being able to look oneself in the mirror at the end of the day and know that you stood up on principle is, um, and have a sense of integrity is the most important thing. Do you think he can survive this revolt? Well, I, I certainly would be concerned if I were him. Um, we'll see. I mean, I, as I said, I've had the benefit of traveling to all quarters of this great country, and there's a pretty consistent message that there is a need for change. Um, and, um, you know, I hope that he takes uh, that into consideration when he's hearing these voices. And I'm sure that the voices of dissent within his party are only going to increase as time goes by. Jody Wilson-Raybould, thank you so much for joining us today and congratulations on your book. Thank you so much.